Hello tacticians, it's Nox here and today we're going to have my first look at Mesa, the Jackal Dishonored. But before we go into that, I just want to say my usual thank yous and today they go to Horatio, Shade, Nekodok, Dr. Albert Hoffman and Dialichus. All of you have used my friend code and it is very much appreciated as it really does help me keep on top of everything that goes on in this game. So thank you once again. Mesa Bloodgrin, to give him his full name, is a jackal and they are the strongest, most savage and bloodthirstiest followers of the world eaters. Though merely human, these elite cultists, I'm not too sure those words go together, seek to emulate the frenzied purity of their gore-crazed masters in any way that they can and dive into combat with wild abandon. So, as always, they've done a fantastic job on the model. It does look like the jackals which are on the tabletop and let's be honest, he does look pretty cool. He has the usual blessings of corn for the World Eaters, which means he's going to do more damage and receive less psychic damage for each unit that was defeated in melee this battle. And he is resilient, which has got its place in the legendary battles and to a lesser extent in the tournament arena and guild wars. So how good is this character on paper? Well, if you look at his health and armor, you're looking at about the same toughness as Yarrick. So that's not a terrible start. However, obviously he doesn't have a ranged weapon and only has chain attacks and only three of them. So he only has that 20% pierce ratio. So he is in a very small niche here where he could be used. Although as with all melee only units, he will like being with Ragnar. His active ability, the Jackal Stims, deal physical damage to an adjacent enemy and all other enemies adjacent to both Mesa and the target, so a maximum of three enemies. Then, Mesa will lose 25% of his current health, but he is then able to attack again. And the reason why you don't mind so much of Mesa losing health is because of his passive Skull Smasher. Mesa deals extra damage for each 10% of his maximum health he is currently missing. In addition, if Mesa has defeated an enemy in this battle, all enemies that he attacks become stunned. So he wants to be in the midst of things and he wants to get damaged. And what about the other levels? Well, here you've got the level 35 and level 50 versions of those skills, as well as his stat lines for silver one, gold one, and Diamond 3. Now bear in mind his defensive item can either be the armor only defense or the health and armor defense so feel free to equip him how you want. Although if it was me I'd probably use the one which uses health and armor purely because it gives him a larger health pool to deal with when he is actually getting damaged. And it is this Skull Smasher which really lends power to the character. Without Skull Smasher, his damage ability is again very similar to Yarrick, but obviously the more damage that he takes, the more that the Skull Smasher will add to his base damage and the more likely he is to actually start doing serious damage to your enemies. So enough about the skills here, let's have a look at him in action. So here again, here we are in a made up world where we can just test things out. And the first thing, as I always like to do, is see what happens when Kalandis takes a shot? There's a crit and he's not dead, but it's always nice seeing a bit more than a quarter health left. So let's try that again. So we'll go for a second shot to see what happens. And there's the crit again, which you kind of expect from Kalandis and with pretty much the same result. So if Kalandis had the higher ground, Mesa here would be very dead indeed. However, it does mean if you're moving into Calendus's range, you'll probably withstand their shot, but you won't be able to attack them with Mesa. Another very common character, of course, is Thaddeus. So let's see what happens when Thaddeus hits with his normal attack. And the result is pretty much the same, but at least here you should be able to move into Thaddeus and attack. And if we look at Mesa, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be anything which indicates how much extra damage he receives. It would be quite nice if there was a little upward arrow here for the buffs, but we'll let that slide. So now let's have a look at him when attacking a fairly common and tanky unit such as Aleph Null. So now we're going to turn the tables. We're gonna attack with Mesa 
and we're attacking Aleph Null here. Now, if we pay attention, he at the moment, Mesa is going to do 258 damage with his normal attack. But in order to attack twice, we have to use the Jackal Stims first. Which did, on a crit, quite a lot of damage. And now you can see that damage has now increased to 387 because of the damage Mesa has taken. So Mesa will finish off and nearly kills Aleph Null. Which in itself is fairly impressive. But of course, he does hurt himself in the process. But Mesa does like taking damage because that way he gets to do more in return. But that's against one character. What about two? Or indeed, even three. So here we are again, and this time Aleph Null is flanked by two friends. And if we move Mesa into the middle and do his active ability, you can see he hits all three. In fact, nearly killed Aleph Null in one go. Must have got a crit there. And in did kill Thaddeus. So we could then follow that up to kill Aleph Null and do some extra damage. Although, with Marnius being as tanky as it is, didn't take much damage overall. Mainly due to his Mark 10 Gravis armour. But now... Jackal's got another trick up his sleeve. If we pass the go back to Marnius and just do a normal attack, we won't do anything special. And we're now back to using Jackal. When Jackal now attacks, he will stun Marnius Kalgar. And what this means, Marnius can now no longer use his active ability. And this might be something to bear in mind in both Guild Wars and the Tournament Arena. However, you have to be careful who you target with that active ability. So I've moved Mesa in, and now if I use the Jackal Stims and choose Thaddeus instead, you can see I don't hit Marnius, but I can now use Mesa to hit Marnius and stun him, which would then prevent him using his ability. What would happen if you haven't yet moved with Jackal and you use his Jackal Stims? Now again, we'll target uh, Aleph Null in the middle. Can we move afterwards? And the answer is yes, you can move after. So that may be something to bear in mind, the ordering and if you're already in combat. Although I imagine what is going to happen in 90% of the cases is you'll be charging in, using your active ability and then stunning someone afterwards if you've managed to kill someone. Because as you can see here, we didn't manage to kill Thaddeus and now Aleph Null is not stunned. So overall, my thoughts on Mesa, I don't really see him used in Guild Raids. I could see him used in melee-only teams for the TA and Guild Wars. And indeed, that would be a great place for him to be used because of his double attack, making sure someone will be dead or at least, you know, in theory, stunning someone. However, I don't think he will last long enough. And that is a shame. The character's very cool. So if you're a new player thinking, should I invest resources into this particular character or focus elsewhere? I would say give this one a miss for now and focus on the ones that help you in the guild raid, in your arena and in the tournament arena and guild wars. This character might have some extra use in the legendary events if there's ever a chain only path that needs to be used. So if you've got a wider collection, then yes, you are going to want to unlock him and start levelling him up. However, I really don't think he's going to be used in very many places. But I'm not always right on this. And if you can think of anywhere that this guy will shine, please let me know and I'm more than willing to test him out. If you like these videos, then it would be much appreciated if you at least think about using my friend code, as it really does help me out. Or if you or your guilds are looking for a new home, please reach out to any of the guilds shown, as we'll always welcome new people into our midst. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you on the battlefield.